With today's horrific GPU prices, a lot of the more reasonable offerings online tend to be for spares or repairs. But just how broken can you go before it becomes a problem? This right here is an NVIDIA GeForce 9500 GT, a graphics card we've seen before on the channel a couple of times and not usually in a great light, but for once we've got one in a somewhat decent form. Or at least that's what I would say if it didn't look like a chunk had been taken out of the PCI Express lane. Anyway, before we focus on that key piece of information, let's have a refresher on the specs of this accursed display adapter. Based on Nvidia's Tesla graphics architecture, it was an entry level GPU with 32 whole shading units, DirectX 10.1 support and final driver support that actually remained still somewhat useful and actually quite optimised by today's standards. Not that it actually achieves all too much with the card's weaker specs and only one whole gigabyte of DDR2 based VRAM. Either way, you get the picture. The GT210 is probably the most modern competitor to this card, although this is probably a little bit more powerful than that. So what makes this card actually interesting? Well, for those of you who weren't observant enough to notice the chunk missing out of the PCI Express lane, well, that's about the only thing that makes this card interesting. Being such a low power card, it hardly utilizes most of the PCI Express lane. So the main hope is that when we actually put this in a computer, it should still function but it'll most likely suffer with limited bandwidth to the computer itself, and will that actually make much of a difference, because I've seen quite a few cards with damaged PCI Express lanes for sale on eBay at the moment. That is, of course, if these power on. Well, we've made it into Windows, so what does GPU-Z actually have to say about the card? Well, it's a real 9500 GT, and seems to be powering on in PCI Express 1x mode. See, speaking to the previous owner of the card, it was modified to allow it to be used in a PCI Express one time slot, just to add dedicated graphics to a PC. I can imagine it makes sense to butcher a cheap GPU like this than it does to butcher a nice board. But still, I've seen a few nicer and more powerful GPUs like this for sale on eBay recently, and it got me thinking, what are the downsides to this practice, and are cards like this sometimes worth the risk? Well, there's only really one way to find out, and we know exactly what that is. The benchmarks. Well, I've attempted a quick overclock on the card to really try and put some stress on that limited PCI Express connection, but that's not where we're stopping the benchmarks. I'm going to be pitting it up against a stock version of one of these turds of a GPU, so why don't we find out if our butchered little potato can actually handle anything at all in the benchmarks. Starting us off with the quite modern title of The Sims 4, running with admittedly relatively low settings, and the performance was surprisingly decent. Yes, the settings were low and laptop mode was turned on, and transparency effects still seem to be very, very intensive on this little card, more than I would have expected. However, with a few tweaks in the settings menu, we were seeing very near 60fps a lot of the time, so already off to a good start considering this card wasn't ever powerful to begin with. However, this hope didn't last all too long. I know GTA 5 is still an intensive game for this tier of card. However, the game is still beautifully optimised and has been since release, so performance was surprisingly close to 30fps a lot of the time, which is definitely playable. However, there was major hitching, which is most likely down to that limited PCI Express bandwidth. Would you believe that this almost went away entirely when I went online? I'm assuming this is most likely down to the cut down environmental action online, but still, it's very strange. But GTA 5... CSGO, well, that can speak for itself. With low enough settings and a resolution to match that, I reckon we were using such little VRAM that it is entirely up to that little graphics chip itself to provide the frame rate, which it did admirably. It wasn't competitive, but it was playable. I was able to have a decent time playing through some Dust 2 Deathmatch. However, more intensive maps could cause the card to stutter. Although frame rates remained similar on average, it didn't feel as smooth as what the numbers were claiming. Something the normal 9500 GT just doesn't suffer with. Now, one game that had very little performance difference between virtually any variant of 9500 GT I could find was Crisis, 
I know we mock it for its intensive system requirements, but the performance on show was relatively impressive. There were stable enough frame rates to enjoy the game, admittedly the visuals did suffer, but the performance remained decent, something quite impressive for a GPU with a chunk bitten out of it. To have a bit more of a mess around with the Source engine, I fired up Gary's mod and Dust 2. With a voxel Astra and plenty of AI mobs, the performance just wasn't where I wanted it to be considering this is less intensive than CSGO. It genuinely feels like Source games are very sporadic on the card. I wish I was able to give a bit more insight into why this is, but I'm just going to have to speculate. I'm assuming it's something to do with how the game accesses VRAM, it's already slow DDR2 based, but crippling that PCI Express bus down to one times? Pairing that with slow RAM is going to have a detrimental effect, and in titles like this, you notice. Then finally to round us off with, we had Minecraft, which surprisingly echoed the exact same thing that happened with Crisis, something I never thought I would ever say. Where there was very little performance difference between any variant of the card and performance was decent even though visuals suffered. But we saw the game running in 720p HD with near 60fps frame rates the majority of the time, exactly what you'd expect from most variants of this card. This was achieved using Optifine, something I often use in most of my Minecraft benchmarks. Now this is where things get a little bit strange. I did try a load of classic titles, as the most likely use case of this was for those older classic titles. However, capturing with OBS, Loilo Game Recorder, virtually anything, MSI Afterburner would cause all these older titles to crash. Generals, The Guild 2, Sims 2, pretty much anything with a 2 in the title at this point. All things would run by themselves absolutely fine, but the moment I went to record them, the card would crash out. Perhaps due to that limited bandwidth, but then again, they usually capture for me, and they did on a normal 9500 GT, but not here. So, the difference between those results and a normal 9500 GT. There wasn't actually a major difference in most titles between this and a normal 9500 GT. I used a very similarly spec'd card with the same configuration and clocks, and the PCIe 1x card did prove to be a little bit of a hindrance in RAM heavy programs. Those like GTA 5 definitely experienced a lot less hitching than what you'd expect, although the average frame rates looked about the same. Normal programs did maintain a degree of parity with this though, where if they were quite intensive on the VRAM of the card, you would definitely see hitching and slowdown even in Windows. But was it actually enough to notice anything when you were doing something practical? Yes, when I was editing or trying to capture there was major slowdown, however in the actual benchmarks, not a great degree of difference unless I've specifically mentioned it. Just to hone in on that desktop usage, which is where the card suffered most, it did seem like on a modern PC, I just experienced slowdown, like you know on Windows XP where like the title screens of programs would lag, or like you drag something around and it would slow down the PC, or transparency effects, all those little things. Decoding definitely lagged on video playback, especially on YouTube and things like that, even with h 264 and it really does make me curious to try and investigate maybe a more powerful broken graphics card to see if this is still the same case, although given on the lowest end where it's meant to be less of a hindrance, it still seems like you are suffering from that lack of PCI Express bandwidth when I didn't think I'd see this much of a difference. So in conclusion. I absolutely always love revisiting these low-end display adapters. They cost peanuts. I mean, these 9500 GTs, they still sell pretty cheap on eBay, although usually the Radeon equivalents are still cheaper and usually a little bit better. And that tends to stick about worldwide stock-wise. Sure, they aren't always the best awful display adapters, but they are commonly available. And the basic construction of most of these 9500 GTs usually means they can take a proper hard life before they stop working, with this exact potato being a brilliant example. Whether you love it or hate it, it does seem like these broken cards still do sort of function, but I really need to take a more thorough investigation into this. This has been really quite an eye-opener into how much abuse a card can take before you actually start to notice it, and how much it can take before it just stops working. So this card has been a bit of an eye-opener and very strange.
So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it as interesting as I have, because I've not had this much fun testing multiple cards in a long time. But thank you very much for watching. Good night. Don't forget, if you want to see more videos like this, and me possibly tracking down more broken graphics cards to benchmark, you can like and subscribe for more videos just like this, or support us on Patreon for behind-the-scenes stuff, and usually the videos up slightly earlier.